Hey guys! So welcome back to my PCT series. Uh, this video will be Hitchhiking 101 and I'll just kind of give you guys some tips and some advice about how to go about hitchhiking on the Pacific Crest Trail. It is necessary, you absolutely have to do it unless you have somebody following you in a car that's going to be able to give you rides into town or somebody dropping off your resupplies. So unless you are going for time and you are a professional hiker, you do not have a company or a group that is going to be following you. So you will have to hitchhike. And I just want to preface all these tips with telling you guys about my very first hitchhiking experience on the Pacific Crest Trail, which was also my very first hitchhiking experience in my life. I had never hitchhiked prior to the Pacific Crest Trail. And to be completely honest, before I left uh, for this hike, I did not know that that was something that I was going to have to do. Because A, I just didn't read everything that there was out there about the Pacific Crest Trail. Um, B, I wasn't the best at planning uh, for this trip, for this trek. And then I also, I didn't, I don't think that any of the books that I read had that information in it about how it would be mandatory that you have to hitchhike to get into town. I don't really know that I let myself think about how I would get to these places. I just never really thought that I would have to hitchhike. But anyway, I did. And on this is my day four of hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And in the beginning, I think I've mentioned it before, but it's it's typically really crowded because I started in April, which is like the starting month for uh, northbounders. And so the trail's pretty crowded. And so usually when you get to a campsite or you know camp at night, uh, it's typically you're always going to be sharing that spot with somebody with another hiker or more or several hikers. So on night four, I think I rolled into my camping site, or like I rolled into camp at about 8 p.m. So pretty late, and there were I think six or seven hikers already there with their tents up, and all of them were guys. And so I met a couple of them that hadn't weren't in their tents yet, and. Two of them actually asked if I needed help setting up my tent, and I was like, no, like I can set up my own tent. But they were just being nice. It was pretty windy. Uh, but anyway, then they said that they were going to go into town, to the town of Julian the next day, and asked if I wanted to go along. And I hadn't planned on going along because A, I didn't even know, I think I knew Julian was there, but I just, I had, with, I think I started off the trail with eight days of food on my back, so I had plenty of food, and that was not a place that I was planning on resupply. But they convinced me because they said that there was this bakery there that had the best pies, that they gave a slice of pie free to every PCT hiker. So I thought, okay, like this sounds fun. Um, I thought that it would just be a fun experience. So I said, yeah, okay. So the next morning, we all kind of left at our own time, but there were these guys hiked together. So I think there were four, four or five of them that hiked together. Four of them, I believe. And so when we all got to the road, you know, I. I don't I still I guess I it still hadn't processed to me that we were gonna have to be hitchhiking in order to get into town. But anyway, we got to the road and the guys were like, okay, Ingrid, like go get us a ride. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And they're like, we have to hitchhike into town. And I'm like, oh my god, like I have never hitchhiked before. Like I it's not that it was embarrassing, I'm just like I didn't I don't know, it was such a weird experience for me. And uh, but anyway, they, they hitchhiked too. But I was like the one on the road that was barely putting my thumb out and I was just kind of really shy about it. But it was really easy to get a ride. There were a lot of trail angels actually in that area that were just kind of driving by and picking up hikers and taking them into town. But anyway, that was my first experience and it got a lot easier and now I would hitchhike like on my own, like at the side of my house, like I don't care. But anyway, that everybody has their first experience and it's not as bad as you think and hopefully this advice and these kind of tips will help you feel more comfortable about it and not worry about it so much because I didn't at all prior to hiking the Pacific Crest Trail and it's seriously not that big of a deal and I think that as long as you try to do it safely and you use logic and um, intuition then you'll be fine. So first of all know that hitchhiking is like mandatory. You're gonna have to do it like I said. Just get over it. It's not as bad as it seems. You can do it with other people for the first like several times that you do it especially when you're starting because there are so many people on the trail, so don't worry about it. Um, I also want to give you guys tips on how to be safe about it. I, I think that I was always safe. I would never put myself in a situation that I felt uncomfortable. And so obviously if you don't feel safe with the person that you've met that wants to give you a ride, then just don't go. I mean, you, you can get another ride. That's not the only ride in the day. And so just do do what you feel is best. And if you don't feel safe, then just don't, don't get a ride with those people or with that person. 
Um, number one tip for being safe is know where you're going. Like know the name of the town, know the approximate distance that it is from where you are on the highway, know which direction it is, just have that information. Uh, whether you can find it on your phone or whether you looked it up before or half mile maps or whatever it is that you have Just know that so that way whenever somebody stops you can tell them exactly where you're going um, Even if they're not aware of where that is because a lot of people will pick you up and they're just traveling And they don't know where that is because they don't plan on stopping there But knowing where you are Knowing how far it is that way when you're in the car you can say okay well in 30 minutes You know it should take us 30 minutes to get there and if it doesn't then you know something's wrong just stuff like that I always like to know I don't want to rely on the driver to to um, take me exactly where I'm going, unless of course it's a location in town, then of course maybe they know the town better. But I like to know where I'm going. Uh, I always stay with my pack if possible, so that just means that, you know, don't throw your pack in the back. If possible, you can ride with it in the cab um, with you. And, I don't know, like, I've heard of, I heard some horror stories about, not not my year, but about how people would take off with their with their gear and their packs and stuff like that. And I just think that if you can stay with your pack, that's the safer you are. But regardless, if I have to put my pack in the back where I can't access it, like in the bed of a truck or something, and then I'm getting in, and the guy's in out of the car helping me get it in, then, you know, whatever. Just be safe about that. Um, I always made sure that when I was at the road and hitchhiking that I had my wallet and my phone and my GPS on me. So when I got into the car, whether I was separated from my pack or not, I knew that I had the, those things. So even if I lost everything else, I had a way to contact people and I had a way to buy stuff and that I would be okay. So I do recommend always having your wallet and your personal items on you, like your expensive things, the things that you'll, you will need in order to get off the trail. Also in knowing like where you're going and how far it's going to take you to get there, that will determine like what time you need to get to the road to start hitchhiking. So if it's only a 5 to 10 mile hitch or something, or mile hitch, then you don't need to, you know, get there at 9 a.m. because, you know, you'll probably get a ride by 4 p.m. Like, that's, it's likely that you'll get a ride in plenty of time. But if you have to go 40 miles or more, my advice is to get to that road as early as possible, even if it means camping right next to the road or a couple miles before the road, just so that you have enough time to get a ride into town, even if it takes you a couple of hours to get a ride, because you never know, is the road going to be a busy road, are there going to be lots of cars, is nobody going to stop? You never know how it is, so I just, to, in order to guarantee that you get into town, make sure that you allow sufficient time in order to get a ride. Also, you can make a sign if you if it's a tough spot and people just are not stopping. Uh, if you watched my gearless video, you saw that I always carried a permanent marker, and that's what I would use to make a sign, and I would uh, just write on my Tyvek, which is my ground cover. It had a completely white, complete white side, and so I would make little signs. I probably used a sign only about five times on the whole trail, so that wasn't a big issue for me. Know that you might be hitchhiking anywhere from like 5 to 50 miles. Uh, just depends on where you're trying to resupply. Uh, and maybe you need to go even further because you need to go to a gear store or something like that. So just make sure that you're planning that and thinking about those things. Um, also, hitchhiking, people have asked me about if you have to pay for, if you pay people when they give you a ride. And hitchhiking typically, no. I mean, that's a free kind of thing. You're just asking people out of the kindness of their heart and giving you a ride. But um, if a trail angel picks you up, which that did happen in the beginning because there are trail angels that actually follow us up the trail, and those people do ask for like a small donation, which is why I just prefer to hitchhike from a random stranger because then I don't owe them anything. But yeah, typically five, five dollars a ride uh, is what you would give to a trail angel giving you a ride. But if it's just a normal person, then no, they might ask for money, but you're not obligated to give them any money and if you don't want to pay them, then just don't get a ride with them. Most people will think that you smell. So don't be offended if they roll down all the windows when you get into the car. I mean, you probably do smell really bad even if you can't smell yourself. Your pack smells, your stuff smells. Uh, so just don't be offended by that. Um, also, a lot of people think that it's a lot easier for girls to hitchhike than guys. And I think, yes, yes, definitely it is. And not just because we're females, but also when we've been out on the trail for a while, guys look tend to look a lot more... Uh, disheveled because their facial hair grows out, their hair grows out to an abnormal length. And girls, I mean, that doesn't really happen to us. We may just look dirty, but that's about all. So guys typically do look a bit more homeless, if that's the term that you're thinking of. When you when some people look at us, they do think that we're homeless. Um, so, I mean, that may, might be a reason why it's a little more difficult for some guys. I know that I spoke to people that gave me a ride that said that, oh, I passed that guy, I, thought it, I just thought he was homeless until I saw you. And so, I don't know, there, the, you do have to think about that, but I, honestly, anybody can get a ride, everybody gets a ride. I've never heard of a PCT hiker never getting a ride, 
and things like that. If you are afraid of hitchhiking alone, you'll always meet somebody in your section that you're hiking and maybe just cling on to them if you're, you know, two or three days out from getting to the road or, or you're a day out from getting to the road and just say, hey, uh, is it okay if I hitchhike into town with you or something like that? And t typically, I mean, anybody's going to say, like, yeah, sure, you know, I plan on getting to the road at whatever time or, you know, just camp with them the night before and then roll in with them. Honestly, everybody's super nice, and if that makes you feel more comfortable, then definitely do that. I know that I really enjoyed having people to hitchhike the first a handful of times because I just didn't feel comfortable. I told you my first hitchhiking story, like I just was not comfortable with the idea of it. But uh, I did quickly become comfortable and by the end, I mean seriously, like I was just, I mean I hitchhiked into Vancouver from Manning Park because I didn't want to pay $90 for a Greyhound bus. So I mean I would hitchhike all the way down back home if I could have, but I, I had to fly home from Seattle. But anyway, so those are just things to think about. I just want you guys to know that it's not that big of a deal and there are safe ways to do it. I never... I was never in a car that I didn't feel safe. Typically I did ride in the bed of a lot of trucks though, uh, just because a lot of people have a lot of stuff in their car and that's the easiest way that they can fit you in your pack. So don't be offended if a lot of guys are like, oh yeah, just hop in the back. So I rode in the back with a lot of dogs and a lot of full cars and kids and things like that, but I met so many nice people while hitchhiking. Like I seriously wish that I had written down everybody's name and address because I would just send them a thank you card today because they just had such a great impact on my life and they made such a good, they made the PCT such a great experience for me. And I think that the, one of the reasons why hitchhiking to me was more pleasant than maybe you heard of other people's horror stories is because I did it in a really smart way. Like I said, I followed all these tips that I'm giving you guys and I was very logical about it. I followed my intuition. Um, I didn't do stupid crap. I wasn't hitchhiking late at night. I was just really smart about it and if I didn't feel comfortable then I wouldn't do it. And so I just want you guys to feel safe doing it and I want to let you guys know that it's not that big of a deal and that you can do it and not to worry about it so much. Like I, like I said, I didn't do any worrying about this prior to my hike because I didn't even know that I would have to do it. So don't worry so much and I'm sure that you will love hitchhiking by the end because it is a free ride which is awesome. Now that I go back to having to pay for gas, I'm like, I wish I could hitchhike everywhere uh, because I would. It's not legal here. But anyway, that is my Hitchhiking 101 video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you have any questions, just write them down below and I will get back to you. Thanks.